Hey everybody, it's Dominic from the Primetime Treasure eBay store and YouTube channel. Thanks for coming by to check out another video. Well, it was bound to happen after thousands and thousands of eBay listings. I finally made the mistake that I have long dreaded making. That is, I accidentally uh, listed an item at the wrong price and it sold before I was able to catch it. Now, if this has happened to you and that's why you're at this video, or if you're just somebody starting out new at eBay or this hasn't happened to you yet, it's likely that one day at some time that it will happen. So what do you do when it does happen? What are your options? I wanna go through those with you so you're aware of what to do because what you pick um, as your option, there's different repercussions to, um, you know, to which one you select and different reasons why you should or should not select one of the options I'm going to go over with you. But let me give you a little background about uh, what exactly happened to me. And I'm going to take this back a couple of days ago. And if you're a member of my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center, this will look familiar because I showed this item recently. This is one that I actually sold for the price that was intended. It's uh, called the Taft Pierce Handbook. And what it is is a book that goes over all sorts of um, machinery and um, it gives a lot of detail about it, as you can see here, in terms of illustrations and articles. And there's lots of cool uh, tables inside of it. So, you know, people who are into uh, machinery and uh, you know, handyman, uh, love this kind of vintage stuff where you could go over and get these nice old references. And, you know, my listing, I just put a bunch of articles. It goes over different kinds of like pipe threads and uh, you know, different types of thread millers. You know, all this stuff is listed here. You know, just really cool vintage stuff. So, you know, it's a small book, um, only costs a couple bucks to ship. Um, and um, I got this as part of a collectibles haul when I went into that House of Horrors. If you remember that video, when I went above the uh, above the door, as soon as I walked in, everyone was walking by it, and I reached up and I grabbed all those books. Uh, I grabbed ten books that were like this for five dollars. So this one selling for forty nine ninety nine was great and gave me my money back and put me into profit pretty fast. And uh, I sold one of the other ones, was a welding book for uh, like $10, $11. So, you know, this was my, my best one. I have another one listed right now. And so I got around to listing another one, which is the Brown and Sharp uh, Small Tools Book. And as you could see here, what happened is I accidentally listed it at $4.99 instead of $49.99. Now, would I have gotten $49.99 out of this one? I'm not sure. Um, you know, getting $49.99 out of this one was something that no one had done before, but it was just the way I had marketed it and the way I had listed it and shown all the pictures. Some people make the mistake of just showing the front and back cover of a book like this, but you don't want to do that. You want to make sure you give the, the buyer a look at what is actually inside it. This kind of thing really entices them to buy it as opposed to just showing them the front or the back cover. So um, I showed a bunch of pictures here. As you could see down below, very similar to what I did with the other book. You could see here that I really was just uh, highlighting the book and all the things inside. I wound up using up all 12 pictures which I don't normally do unless I really want to, um, you know, to impress the buyer about uh, particular features of a book. And I don't feel a couple pictures will do it justice. And one of the cool things about this book was that uh, you can see it's called the Brown and Sharp Small Tools, ca Tools Catalog. Is that when I was looking at it, and this is one of the reasons why you should definitely inspect your books. In the front cover right here, there was a little uh, pocket, and I opened it up, and I took this thing out, and what I saw was that it's a, it's basically a discount list for prices, but what was really neat right here, as you can see, it was signed, uh, as it says, at the request of Mr. Brown, so, you know, whether Mr. Brown himself signed that, you know, 
technically, I you know could have been someone else signing on behalf of them, but still, it's a signature of Mr. Brown. None of the other books have that. If we look at the comps for it, uh, you could see no one else has sold this book. This is listed from highest to lowest. No one has sold any one of these types of books for more than $13.99 individually. Uh, but this is catalog, uh, this one's catalog number 34. Mine here was catalog number 30. So uh, I, had a, I had one that was a little bit earlier. So I was hoping that that, uh, actually it was 31. I even put the wrong uh, number on it there. So it should have been 31, not 30. So there was a mistake there. Um, I was, you know, I mean, not to completely excuse myself, but uh, as you know, sometimes I stay up pretty late at night. And um, I, was, I was up late at night. That could have been one of the reasons factoring in as to why I made a couple of numerical typographical errors here. Um, and also, I had gotten a new keyboard installed into my laptop earlier that day, so I wasn't as used to the actual uh, numbers in terms of you know just just typing them out, and uh, that you know just the feel of it could have been something that affected me in terms of typing the numbers wrong. I'm not exactly sure. I'm trying to figure out why I made these mistakes because I don't normally make them. But uh, bottom line is I. You know, the main error that I made here was I put the wrong price in. I put it in as $4.99 when I should have had it at $49.99. That was my intention. Again, would it have sold for that? I can't say. Uh, it's impossible for me to know now. But um, it definitely would have sold for more than $4.99. So I wake up in the morning uh, and I see that my item has sold. And I was pretty excited about it because I thought I got the $49.99 out of it. I was so tired I couldn't even clearly read the, um, you know, clearly read the sale price. But uh, I forwarded it on to Mrs. Primetime, my wife, who had uh, just walked downstairs. So I sent her an email that said I had made the sale, and she's sitting there looking at it, and she says to me, $4.99. Because she knew the night before I was pretty excited about listing this book because I had discovered the insert with the signature in it. Now, I thought Miss Primetime was playing a joke on me. Because once in a while she likes to play these little jokes where um, she says I priced the item wrong and, you know, wow, you, you sold it at the wrong... Like she, she plays those jokes. Not that I ever did that before, but she tries to play little tricks like that. So I thought she was just kidding around. And I'm like, ha, ha, ha. And she's like, no, no, I'm serious. You sold it for $4.99. So I go, like, all right, let me take a look. So I took a look and I saw it and I was just, oh my God, I can't believe I made that mistake. So um, mistakes happen like this. And now what are you going to do about it? What a lot of people do in this situation is they immediately try to correct their mistake by canceling the item. And... If you do that, here's what you need to be aware of. You are setting yourself up very, very likely for a negative feedback that will affect your seller status on eBay. And trust me when I tell you, based on other people I know who have done this, that when that person leaves you a negative feedback, eBay is not going to take that away. No matter how much you appeal it, they are going to side with the the with the um, with the buyer the reason for that is because it really is your mistake it's your mistake as the seller you didn't you weren't careful enough you priced it wrong it's just like if you walked into a store and the item was priced wrong you're usually gonna get it for the price that the you know store made an error with um, now sometimes in some stores, depending on the situation, let's say you found an item, and this has probably happened to all of us, right? There's an area where there's a bin where it says everything is $4.99 or less, let's say. And somebody put an item in that bin that was $100. In that situation, if you brought that up to the front, is the store going to give you that $100 item? Nope, they're likely not. They're going to say, all right, you know, there's a time where, let's say if there was a $10.99 item in there, in that $4.99 or less bin, 
they'll give you a break on it. They'll give you a deal. Say, okay, sorry, our mistake. But there's a certain level where they're going to say we're not going to eat the cost of it. So it's the same situation that really applies here in terms of how you want to handle it. Because what I would tell you, you should initially do, rather than jumping to that instant cancel and set yourself up for the negative feedback, is at least try this first. Send the buyer an email through eBay. Keep everything on eBay and say, listen, I'm sorry. I made a mistake in my listing. It was supposed to say $49.99. I listed it as $4.99 by accident. Would you be willing to cancel the item? And I'll make you a deal. Like you could accept the best offer on it. But I want to put it back up at the original price. And um, I'm willing to negotiate with you. Because think about it. What do you really have to lose at that point? Because if the person says no, you're still going to have to sell it for that $4.99 price. And you're going to have to take the loss. But there's a chance the person, you know, what you're hoping for is that maybe you could weigh on the person's conscience a little bit. And a person might say, okay, you know, I feel bad. I don't really want to screw this person over in terms of their business. And there are some people who will do that, who will say, okay, they'll cancel the item. The reason why you want them to request the cancel, even if it's after an hour, as long as the, uh, as long as the buyer tells you somewhere in some kind of communication that they want to cancel it, you could then go in and cancel it, and then you will be protected from a negative feedback. If the person left one, which they shouldn't, if they requested the cancel, um, and they agreed to the terms that you put forwards, then you should be all set and not have to worry about a negative feedback. But there are times, as in the situation here, where the buyer is going to basically say, no way, I'm not doing that. Um, now, my buyer in this instance just chose to never respond to me. And so um, in that situation, especially if you have one day handling time like I do, you have to make a decision now. What are you going to do? Are you going to sell it for the $4.99 and take the loss? Or, or whatever is the price that you, you had it for. Or are you going to cancel it and take the chance of the negative feedback? Which, by the way, the chance of that negative feedback is very, very high. So here's what I would tell you to do. It's really It really comes down to a numbers game. So in my situation... And this is why I showed you some of the background to this, and I showed you what some of the comps are. Yes, I had it at $49.99. Yes, I previously sold a different book for $49.99 that was somewhat similar. So maybe max, that's what I could have gotten. However, I could have had the item sit for a while, could have got best offers. Maybe it doesn't sell for more than $20. So I can't tell you 100% it would have sold for the 50. That's psychologically something you got to kind of use to kind of rationalize the approach. So how much would I really, really, truly be losing here in this situation if I sell for the 499? Because the shipping is $2.66. So, you know, even there, I'm still making a tiny bit on it, but, you know, not much. It's not really worth it. But um, it's definitely not worth me taking the negative feedback on. So what I did in this situation is I just sold it. I shipped it out. And by the way, in my email to the person, what I, what I also said and what I recommend saying is, you know, if you don't uh, agree, I will still sell it to you for the, um, you know, for the, for the price that you purchased it for. But you're just trying to let the person know, listen, there was a mistake. And is the person willing to work with you to uh, correct the mistake? Again, a lot of people will not do that, but there's a chance at least some people uh, some people will. Now, I am not saying that this should definitely be your option in all situations, because let's just say here that this was some incredibly rare book that had comps on it that it's previously sold for hundreds of dollars, and let's just say as a hypothetical, this book is a $500 item. In fact, right now, I actually have a comic book up online. It's, uh, in fact, do I have it? Yeah, I actually have it right here. This is uh, Batman number 46. I showed it in my video last night. I have it up in my eBay store for $499.99. Now, I will tell you this. As much as I, you know, like to 
you know, be a good business person and be good with my customers and, um, you know, admit that I made a mistake and try to work with them around it. If I accidentally listed this book at $4.99 and the person bought it, I could tell you in that situation, I'm not taking a $500 loss. In that situation, taking the negative is better than the $500 loss. So it really depends on how much money's at stake here in terms of what option you're gonna go through. That's why I take it back to the brick and mortar situation. You know, a 10.99 item and a 4.99 bin, yeah, they'll give you that one. A $100 item and a 4.99 bin, never gonna happen. So it's the same thing. There's certain losses that you could explain away and you know, you could say as a you know, normal part of doing business, there's other ones where as a business owner, you know, you've got to be real careful in terms of the degree of loss that you're willing to accept. And so sometimes it's, you know, it's a trade-off. You have to weigh the positives versus the negatives and kind of move forward from there. So uh, that's how I uh, approach this situation. And uh, the other thing, by the way, when this happens is, you know, it's okay in life and in business to make a mistake, but you then have to figure out, okay, how am I going to prevent this from happening in the future? And so for me, what I decided to do just as a new plan going forward is every time that I make a listing is, um, you know, when you make the listing, it says, here's your listing and click if you want to see it. I don't always click to see it. I just, you know, look at it later. But um, this happened late at night when I made the listing. And so uh, I, I never looked at it. So definitely... Uh, double check look at your listing when it's fresh just to make sure you have the price right for you know at least and I'll look it over make sure there's no typos that sort of thing so um, you know that's what I'm gonna do from this point forward and just try to you know move on as quick as you can from the situation because this kind of stuff could weigh you down during the day and make you pretty upset um, so it's best to just try to resolve it as quick as possible and then just move on psychologically to the next thing get some more listings up make some more sales and um, you know, just put it behind you. So I hope you found this um, uh, this video interesting and and helpful. Hopefully it doesn't happen to you, but if it does, now you know what to do, um, and you also now know what to do to prevent it. So use my mistake as something that can help you out. And um, like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. Make sure you come to my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center, and help me rebuild my Instagram account. I uh, used to have 1,200 followers. I just started it back up again the other day. I'm at around 54. So uh, that's at prime underscore time underscore treasure. So check me out over there as I uh, try to build that account back up. And I'll see everyone at the next video. Thanks, everybody.